Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at a Bible verse. It's just like we need food and water for our physical bodies. We also need to feed our spiritual bodies. We feed our spiritual bodies by reading the Bible. You can read a physical copy of the Bible, a free Bible app, one of the various free websites, or a free program on your computer. But it's so very important to read the Bible for yourself to know what the Word has to say. We give you an appetizer, a verse of the day in these daily videos, all along with some discussions in hopes that you will dust your Bible off. You will complete this meal. You will feast on the Word. Today we are going to be in the book of Psalms, chapter 51. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. Starting here in verse 1. To the chief musician of Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him, after he had gone into Bathsheba, have mercy on, upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Now where it says, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. If you look at the Bible Gateway, you tap in Psalms 51.1, you're going to see some beautiful, different expressions of loving kindness. Almost every version has a different way of saying it. I didn't put them all in, I don't think. I basically thought, well, we got the point. But, if you feel like you're down and out, and you feel like you're down in a valley, you're down into a deep pit, feel like you're in sick and sand, no one hears you, no one cares. I pray that these two verses will help you, and they'll be your prayer to cry out to God. So when he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. One version just says kindness. One says unfailing love. Another one says great compassion. Another one says abundant mercy. Loving devotion. Faithfulness. Faithful love. Abundant compassion. Great mercy. Just just different work, different ways to express how much the Lord loves us and He's won the Lord's compassion. And that's what we need. Whenever we're going through something we feel like there's no hope. We want the Lord to be compassionate to us and to hear our cry. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Psalm 52, 50, verse 2 Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. That's what we want. We want him to, to blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly of our iniquity. And cleanse us from our sin. Of course, we know that nothing can wash away our sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's what we got to cry on, rely on, is rely on the Lord to deliver us from whatever we're going through and to take away our sin and to help us through whatever situation we're going through. Just like David here, I mean, he felt. He felt alone because, you know, he would, he had sinned against the Lord. Now he felt like he didn't want the Lord to cast him off. Like he thought that, um, he was hoping that maybe he didn't make this one last mistake and it was over. He's like, forgive me this sin and don't cast me off. Don't, don't just throw me away because of what I did. And you know that we all face that. I mean, you know, there's sometimes we may feel like like we're unworthy. Like if some sinned one too many times. And we feel like we're when we're in a valley, when we're down in that pit, when we're in that sinking sin, we feel like well God's not gonna hear me because I messed up too much. But God will hear you. And not only will he hear you, he will help you through any and everything you're going through. So put your faith and trust in Jesus today. But, I will say that if you don't know Jesus, 
maybe crying out to him hoping that he will wash away your sins it may not work because you haven't called him you don't have the faith in him maybe you sit in the church but you haven't truly called on him I'd love to introduce you to Jesus today and if you haven't called on today as the opportunity today is the day of salvation because Jesus is coming back soon to set up his earthly kingdom the requirement to enter this kingdom is we must be absolutely perfect without sin God is perfect God is holy God cannot dwell with sin you know and whenever whenever he gave Moses the law we read about it in Exodus that showed us that it showed us our sin it showed us that we we can't get around it I mean just the Ten Commandments alone you know Jesus said if you've ever looked at someone you've lusted after them you you know you've committed adultery I mean who had not done that Jesus says if you hate your brother without a cause and it doesn't mean your physical brother because you may not have a physical brother it means you anybody a stranger on the street someone cuts you out of traffic it says if you hate him without a cause and you committed murder in your heart that desire is there that leads to murder now, that may sound extreme but that's in God's eyes when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments I think he gave him the version that they could handle at the time so when he told Moses Thou shalt not commit adultery is one of the Ten Commandments. He didn't expound on what his what his idea of that was. Because he he knew that the people would be able to understand it, be able to handle it. But God is perfect. God is holy. And he gave us laws because he showed us that he has this demand of perfection. And because we sin, we cannot meet that perfection which is why we need a savior because no one is without sin and sin creates a separation between us and God and not only does it separate us but it creates a valley and with each sin that valley gets wider and deeper and that sin is there because we live in a fallen world to sin means to break God's rules and like we said Ten Commandments are part of his rules and when we break them either thought or action that's sin no one's without sin no one's perfect no one's righteous that's why we can't earn our salvation by our works whatever you may think will make you worthy of heaven if it's apart from faith in Jesus it's going to fail because there's a punishment for our sin a punishment for breaking God's rules and that sin has to be paid and the wages the punishment for sin is death and all of us face eternal judgment and separation from God and the only way to pay for those wages those of sin is by the shedding of blood in the Old Testament they would use the blood of an animal sacrifice but it was only strong enough for one sin once someone would sin again they'd have to offer another animal this is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord because God knows and that's part of what the law was about to show us that we can never be good enough to earn salvation on our own that's why Jesus came and died for us on the cross Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect life and became the substitute for our sins because Jesus is God he always existed he left his throne in heaven he left eternity and he put on flesh wasn't an angel wasn't a ghost wasn't a prophet flesh and blood and bone born of a virgin 
fully God, fully man, 100% monk, God, 100% man. Lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus came to earth just to die for all of us. Jesus was crucified on the cross, was buried in the tomb for three days and three nights, and then rose from the dead, proving that he was God because death and the grave had no power over him. And unlike that sacrifice of the animal that was only strong enough for one sin, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was so powerful that it paid for the sins of everyone in his day, all the way up to today, and all the way to the end of the world. And then Jesus rose from the dead, proving that he is God. And he wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we deserve for our sin was poured out on Jesus. Just like John 3.16 says, God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus paid God's price, that price of perfection, because he cannot dwell with sin. That sin has to be washed away. There's a heavy price to wash that sin away. Jesus paid that price for our sin when he died on the cross. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood for our, our sins. And his blood covered our sins. So that we do not have to die. Jesus died for us because of our sins. We're the ones that are guilty. He's innocent. And just like we're about to go to jail, Jesus steps in and goes to jail in our place. Because of our sin, we deserve to die. But Jesus loves us so much that he died for us. That's why truth, Jesus truly is the only way to the Father. There is only one way to heaven, and that is Jesus, because he is the only one worthy to pay that price. He paid our debt. We're free to go. Jesus redeemed us, purchased us, bought us back from the world with his shed blood on the cross. Our sins are paid in full. And that's why we got to individually receive him as Lord, receive his free gift. Because your grandma being a Christian, your mama being a Christian, they don't cut it. It's a personal relationship. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. And if you've never called on the name of the Lord Jesus today, it's a day of salvation. And it's so simple. ABC simple, as you may hear, ABC is a salvation. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit that you break God's rules and that you don't want to break God's rules. I'm sorry, Lord, I broke your rules. I'm a sinner. You know, so that people like to use sinner as a weapon. As the to think that they're better than people. But we all sin. We're all sinners. Whether we're saved by Jesus or not. We're, when we're saved, we Jesus is perfecting us, but we're still, we're unfinished. So we're still going to sin, so we're still sinners as well. A lot of people like to use it as a weapon and act like they're better than someone else. But in reality, we're all sinners. So if you haven't come on Jesus, just admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you can't do this on your own. But you need a Savior. You know, we've all tried to do things on our own. You may have fell on your face, hit rock bottom. Just admit that you can't do this on your own. Believe who Jesus is. That he is the Son of God. That he is the Lord. Believe that he died for you. Was buried and rose again from the dead. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess your sins to Jesus. And repent. That means to turn away. Have a change of heart. Have a change of mind. Do a 180. Make a U-turn. Change your behavior. Know that you are so loved. You're so special to God. God has a plan for your life. And like any good parent, God only wants the best for you. So seek Jesus. Call out to him. Invite him in your life today. Jesus is truly coming soon. That trumpet is soon about to sound. The rapture. When Jesus calls the, the dead saints, the people who have believed in him and have died, they'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. 
and we which are alive and remain who have our faith and trust in Jesus will be caught up to meet them in the air and we're going to be forever in heaven a place where there's no sorrow no death no pain no sickness no disease no depression we can see all the signs that Jesus talked about happening worldwide so don't wait don't put Jesus off don't wait till you get to a point in time in your life where you feel ready to come to Jesus or till you overcome something don't wait till you overcome an addiction don't wait until your finances are secure don't think that you're unsavable it doesn't matter what you've done in this life if you still have breath in your body and you can be saved and, if, and the Holy Spirit may be drawing you right now as you're listening to my voice if you've never called on the Lord and you feel this tug don't think that you're unsavable don't think well, the ceiling will fall down if I come to Jesus if I walk into a church don't wait go to God now you see I'm, listen to this if you've never called the name of the Lord right now I pray that you listen to this right now Jesus will not condemn you I don't care what you've done Jesus loves you he's not going to condemn you for your past in fact he will help you through any and everything that you're going through so please give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity you see Jesus already paid the price for your sins all you have to do is accept that free gift it's a free ticket a golden ticket waiting for you into heaven and you have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it's too late this is your wake-up call Jesus is coming very soon you don't have time to wait you're not guaranteed that you'll wake up tomorrow but you'll see the sun rise tomorrow maybe one day too late so please turn to Jesus today while you have the opportunity well I pray you guys on another video if you did give God glory I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow I love you Jesus loves you I'll see you tomorrow God willing or hopefully we'll see you in the clouds